Thanks, Adam. Former President Donald Trump has responded to his fourth indictment, claiming he has proof that will exonerate him from criminal charges in Georgia. Trump and 18 others were charged in connection with efforts to overturn the 2020 election. He is going to have to prove that Donald Trump subjectively knew that his claims were false and that he was therefore committing fraud. He legitimately believes he won the election here in Georgia. And that is the entire linchpin of the prosecutor's case. So in a social media post, Trump promised to unveil a new report showing voter fraud in Georgia. This comes as the first Republican presidential debate is just a week from today. Joining us now with more on this case is Doug Luzader in D.C. Hi, Doug. Good morning. So what is the former president's strategy here to get exonerated? Well, we don't know what he's going to unveil on, on Monday, which is when he's promised to um, take the wraps off this report that somehow pertains to allegations of voter fraud uh, in Georgia. This is an effort to refute this latest uh, indictment that came down from Georgia, uh, from the, uh, the, uh, the district attorney there. Um, you know, this is something that's been pretty well litigated up to this point, so we don't know what new may be part of this, but the uh, former president is certainly raising a lot of expectations ahead of doing this. And, you know, his schedule is getting quite full. I mean, this is coming on Monday, we think. Uh, we've got this first Republican debate in Milwaukee on Wednesday of next week. And then on Friday of next week, the former president has to uh, turn himself in. That's the deadline of, to uh, respond to these charges uh, that are the, the most recent ones filed in Georgia. So we've got four you know, big criminal cases pending against the former president. And we're going to get back to that debate in just a second. But so far, are these new charges impacting the former president's campaign? Well, we don't know yet. Um, we, we do know that there was a poll that recently came out just before these charges were filed indicating that the support among Republicans had actually gone up somewhat. Um, now, you know, will this factor into, into his decision, for instance, as to whether to take part in that debate? We don't know uh, because he's undecided at this point. But he is the clear front-runner still for the Republican nomination. And if anything, uh, these indictments seem to, uh, seem to bolster his status. I know you just said he's undecided. Do you know the likelihood he participates next next week in that debate? Well, you know, look, he's got a few things to consider. Um, one is the fact that, that front runners generally don't like to participate in debates. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of potential downside, and there's not necessarily a whole lot of upside, especially if you're leading with the kind of margin that Trump is enjoying right now among Republican voters. Uh, the other issue has to do uh, with a requirement that the National Party uh, has kind of grafted onto this debate, which is that you, you, you cannot participate in the debate unless you agree to support the Republican nominee, whoever that person may be. And, and this has been difficult for a number of Republicans, but especially former President Trump, uh, who says that he's just not going to sign that kind of a pledge. And, and absent that, it's not clear how he would participate in the debate on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. All right, Doug Luzader, thank you so much for your time this morning reporting to us live from Washington, D.C.